Hello guys, it's Pod Gaming here and welcome back to another episode of City Skylines. Today we're going to be building a 134 year old British sea fort that's been given a new life as a luxury island resort. Now the fort itself is called the Spickbank Fort and it is absolutely beautiful. I saw this a little while back and it's been on my sort of short list of builds for quite some time now and I've been messing around a little bit during Monaco and uh, just generally playing the game and I found a few new techniques that I wanted to try out. So this is what got me intrigued to actually give this build a go. So we're going to do this today and you may have already caught some of this on uh, Twitch because I've been doing some live streams recently as well. So keep an eye out for those. For those of you that haven't seen it, we'll start from the very beginning and let's get into it. Now I know this isn't your conventional build when it comes to City Skylines, but I like to be unusual and I like to try out new methods of building within the game's capabilities. And this one certainly was a challenge. It did take me a little while. You see on the screen now, probably attempt number seven in terms of getting this section built up and uh, working. And you'll see as the video goes on, I do learn from my mistakes and we do change a bit here and there, but I've cut out the majority of it. So we should have a very nice flowing video. Now with all my builds, I do like to learn as I go along. And I did a bit of research in the Spitbank um, fort and uh, basically it's an old fort stroke watchtower that provided protection against intruders. And it's located a mile outside of the Portsmouth Harbour in Hampshire. And the whole fort was decommissioned in 1982 after defending the British nationals from boats and light aircraft for over 100 years. The actual building itself was passed through a number of private owners until eventually, after £4.85 million of transformation, the luxury island as we see it today was transformed and wow, it is stunning. If you look at it from a distance, you don't quite believe what is actually inside the Ford itself. It just looks like a standard watchtower, but it's really an incredible, incredible piece of work here. And not only is it so remote, you have to actually go on a boat to get to the area and there's only one way on and off the fort itself you can't even land a helicopter so it's very secure and well i imagine rather expensive for a night stay but that is that that's a bit of history for you guys and let's jump back into the build itself so as you can see what i've done with the actual ground level here is put some of the uh, roads down and that is purely so i can higher and lower the um the terrain itself because i wanted to ideally um, get this to be a bit more lifelike by having the actual floor close to the ground rather than building it all via move it and um, proper asphalt I wanted to be able to still place stuff down because it does make life easier when you're doing custom builds where you've actually got a floor to play with you'll see a bit later on how difficult this does become when you try and particularly place down um, road network um, hedges and sort of walls etc because there's no land for it to get onto it does take a bit of time to be able to do that when it's a floating access like these are now I knew that I was not gonna be able to get this perfectly the same as what we see on Google Maps etc but I wanted to try and still create the basis built upon the spit bank um, fort and add a little bit of my own flair as well so we use these buildings for the main sort of focal hub when you enter the actual fort um, and it works really well, I really like the wood texture, it, it does look very sleek and uh, modern looking which is what this fort has become in terms of its interior design. Obviously the outskirts and outside of it is always going to be very run down and uh, well to, to match the age of the actual building itself um, you know it's going to need to do a bit of work to, to make it all modern but in terms of the actual construction itself and what they've done to renovate it I wanted to try and give that feel and vibe off whilst building. Now this section here, as I mentioned earlier, is the only way on and off of the fort. Well, you could jump off, but that would be rather silly. So this is the main function area to get into the actual main site. And I wanted to create a similar look to what it looks like um, in real life. So creating a sort of staircase on the way down with some metal structures beside it as well. And you'll also see I added the crane up there as well, because there is a crane to lift the boats on and off the uh, fort, I imagine or more likely to carry um, large items up in terms of stock and you know food etc so i wanted to replicate that and we also use some of these scaffolding um, assets as well from the workshop which again match the wood like 
look of the main front building so that worked out very nice indeed and my plan here moving forward I wanted to make a lot of different sort of terrain heights here um, obviously as I said earlier we can't replicate it exactly but using the um, plumble asphalt so I was hoping to create a lot of different sort of heights within this area because if you imagine a fort itself it is all different heights if you if you see one not everything's on the same level and the way that a fort tends to work is the central middle area is where everything happens that's the hub of the um, the fort itself because if you imagine the outside of this fort needs to be ridiculously strong to accommodate any uh, any fire from the enemies so everything was very centralized in terms of the build so that's what I wanted to try and replicate with my model and now what we're doing is we're using the um, procedural objects mod here to put down some of these grass decals work really nice and you'll see the advantage of procedural objects is the fact you can minimize and enhance the sizes of the um, any objects you're working with really so it does really help when you're trying to fulfill different areas it's just an easier way in my opinion to place down in sort of more tricky areas obviously the move it mod tool is brilliant at um, placing them in mass but I always find that the uh, procedure objects mod just adds to the uh, the easeability of that and you'll see now as well we're putting down some of the ladders and steps to create the contours of this area trying to make it look real in terms of how it all comes together I always like to imagine if I'm getting into this area or anything I build what route would I be walking does it all make sense Do the ladders go to the place the right places are there places people can't reach to so it's all things like that which um, eventually help build a realistic build now on the thoughts of realistic build I just wanted to update everyone on the uh, channel itself I know there's been a lack of videos as of late and I know a lot of you have been asking whether the project Monaco series is still active and firstly yes it is um, the project itself is still ongoing it's just taken a bit of a back burner um, mostly because of uh, a lack of time I've had recently I don't know if you've uh, caught the update from the other video I did but um, I've recently moved house and the last month or two have been so hectic with work it's really minimized the amount of time I've had to build and whilst I could do very quick episodes it's not the Monaco way I want to keep things flowing as I have done because I'm really pleased and proud of the uh, videos I've done so far and the format I'm using so there will be more videos coming up the only thing that I was going to suggest that I might do with the Monaco series is maybe build smaller segments so I could at least do a video every two weeks at the very minimum um, but having said that let me know in the comments below guys what your thoughts and feelings are on the Mon Monaco project do you want to see videos more regular on a shorter basis or do you want to wait for these big sort of 30 to 45 minute videos where a big segment has been completed very detailed and with that said I actually have started to begin a potential new series for the coming year um, not going to mention much about it just yet because it is still very early stages and I still need to work out what's possible in terms of how I can release these as videos alongside Monaco because obviously Monaco is the baby Monaco is what is going to have a lot of concentration time on but I also like the idea of having a second project that um, I can use to chill out from the stresses of building Monaco and uh, jump into something a little bit maybe easier to work with so let me know your thoughts on that guys do you want to see another series or should I hold out until Monaco is done um, I'm more than happy to, to work on both and if you've been fortunate enough as well to have the time you would have noticed that I've been streaming a little bit more than I have done in the past as well so I've been streaming on my um, Twitch account and also through this YouTube channel on the gaming live channel for YouTube and I really am enjoying it guys I really am I love the interaction with everyone that comes along and you know I like the idea of having potentially a series that I can use to stream and also then create some videos like I am already so the possibility of combining both would work for me um, let me know what you think do you want to see um, some live play of me doing this either way guys let me know in the comments below if you want to see some more of me live streaming
So as you can see now, things are really starting to take shape. We use some of our Mesto's beautiful um, buildings here to create that look. And I think it works really well. The textures match the wooden construction of the main building. And it just looks really, really nice. I do like the whole way you can build these buildings into the wall, so to speak. So it does really, really cry out for a nice look. But with that in mind, I then thought to myself, how can we make this area look a little bit more realistic? The walls themselves look more like two polos on top of each other. So I decided to try out some of these um, keys and this one here, it works so, so well. Look at that. I mean, the textures, the angle of the actual um, the circle itself when you put it down together works incredibly well. Really pleased with how well this started to come together and the texture the details. I know it's meant to be for a key, but look at that. If you want to make a port, guys, that is what you want to use. That is sensational. And then with the Monaco curved walls all the way around the top as well, the two tiers just come together so nicely. So all I had to do was move some of the areas around a little bit to accommodate the new um, angles of this C wall. But I am so pleased with this. This really did make the, um, the build come alive. It just was a game changer. And I'm really, really satisfied with how that came about. So keep that in, go in mind, guys. If you want to create a fort or some sort of sea defense, make sure you look at the sea walls because the angles that they create look so much better. So much better indeed. And you'll see as well, the use of procedural objects was quite high in this build, in particular for doing some of these sloped areas. And as you can see here, um, once you work out the usability of procedural objects, it is so much easier. And there's a, I know there's a lot of people out there who haven't really given it a chance because it seems too complex, but it's not, it really isn't. If you can use Move It, you can use this eventually. You do need to learn a few little tips along the way. And you can, you know, you need to learn as you play to really get the most out of this amazing mod. But as you can see, look how much easier it is. I can just place down, um, you know, these planter areas here. So easy. And I can change the dimensions within an instant as well. So it does really work well. And you'll see in a minute as well, we use it to do some other aspects of this area. But all in all, it's certainly a mod. You need to at least give it a try and see how you get on. Now this segment here was probably my absolute favorite of the whole build. Using procedural objects, we took this Japanese gate or fence with some windows and basically chopped off the top of the roof using procedural objects, moved it downwards and then back on itself. And this, look at that. That is the look of what I was going for. I wanted to find a way of making some windows to put inside the side. to so one, kind of smooth off these edges and also two, make it look a little bit more interesting. I know realistically you wouldn't have anyone in this segment here of the wall because that's the um, defense structure. But look at this, when you place these together, wow, they look so damn good. And that's, what I, that's another thing I love about procedural objects. I know I keep talking about it, but the fact you can just change the look of something into something you want by, you know, I know in this instance I'm hiding it away, but you know, if procedural objects could delete part of buildings in that sense, that would probably be the ultimate addition to have for this amazing mod. But for now, we just use it to our ability and I really enjoy learning these new techniques using procedural objects. It is really, really fun to do. And I love creating different shapes and you know assets myself in game using it. I know I'm not really, but you know, in terms of what it is, it really does work well.
Now the final game changer for this particular build was the fact I wanted to have a white edge around it. Just like in real life, the Spit Bank Fort has a very white looking um, top to it. And I had trouble trying to work out how to do this. And then eventually I did find this. I found a snow decal, which of all things, I did not expect to be using in this fashion. And not only that, but it places on top of the, um, the wall itself and it also strangely i'm not sure if it's just this particular asset that i'm using but it allows you to actually put the uh the actual decal on the side as well so not only just the top that you see but using the page up and page down i was able to actually create the uh the white decal over the um the side of it as well you'll see it very shortly coming up but look at the difference that makes just by putting the white white texture on top we do add a few decals on top of that to make it not look as bright, but it does really, really come to life here. I'll be interested to see what you guys have been up to as well on City Skylines. If you're not already, please check in, please look out for the link at the bottom of the description for my Twitter. And also jump into Discord because we've got a few members now and we're always posting images of what we've created, screenshots of new builds and everyone is so, so kind in there and very nice. It's a very relaxing area to sort of come and chill out. So if you want to drop by, click the link below and come and join the party and show us what you have been building. If any of you have built a fort or a castle or anything similar to what I have done today, I would love to see how you got on. So as you can see, that's pretty much the main detailing done now of this beautiful fort. And last but not least was adding in some nighttime um, lights as well. I wanted to really make this area pop. And by doing so, adding all these extra lights in really did help bring this area to life. It's, still, it's one of those things where it's really interesting to see how a build looks different when you change it from night to dark. And you'll see here as well, I'm actually placing some lights in behind these um, windows I created with the procedure objects mod to make it look like at night time there are people in this area and it works really nice I do like using the lights to create different types of um, animation I guess but guys thank you very much for your time I really have enjoyed doing this video it's something that was really fun for me especially doing it live on Twitch and YouTube so for now that will be it We'll be back very shortly with some Monaco episodes and keep an eye out on my social media for when I'm next doing a live stream. 
Other than that, guys, enjoy the final cinematics, and I'll catch you again very, very soon. Thanks for watching, and all the best.